8.6 is called Any Way You Slice It, and the shapes in this section will involve circles, and they are slices of circles. So every formula will, at least in some way, incorporate the area formula of a circle. And the first one's called a sector of a circle. The sector of a circle, I've got a picture of one over here. A sector of a circle is the region between two radii of a circle and the included arc. So examples of sectors of circles might be something like a slice of pizza or a slice of pie. So that's probably making you hungry right now. It's making me hungry. So go ahead and pause the video and go grab a slice of pizza and come on back and do the rest of the notes. That might be a good thing to do. All right, so a sector of a circle. is the region between two radii and their included arc. Okay, so you see the radii here out from the center of the circle and the area between them would be the sector of a circle. So you can see it looks just like a slice of pizza or pie. Okay, so the formula for this is going to be very similar to the formula from chapter 6 when we were doing arc length. It's the same format. Basically, we've got the area that's going to be a function of the arc measure out of 360, so the fraction of the circle. So if, if your arc measure on the outside was, say, 60 degrees, then that would be 1 sixth. 60 out of 360 is 1 sixth. 90 degrees, that's one-fourth of the circle, or if it's 180 degrees, that's one-half of the circle. So the arc measure will tell us the fraction of the circle, so fraction of circle. And then we're going to multiply that. Last unit when we're doing arc length, we multiply that fraction times the, the circumference, but this time we're dealing with an area, so we're going to multiply it by the area of the circle. So the formula for the sector is going to be arc measured out of 360 times pi r squared. The next one that we'll take a look at is called a segment of a circle. Now that's a little bit confusing because the word segment is used in uh, another context in geometry, but the segment of a circle is the region between a chord of a circle and the included arc. A good example of a segment of a circle would be a sunset the part of the sun that you see above the horizon would be called the segment of a circle. So next time you watch a sunset, maybe you can tell anyone you are with, ooh, I know what that is, that's a segment of a circle. They'll be really impressed. All right, so that is the region between a chord and its included arc. All right, so here is our chord, and then the included arc would be that along the outside. So that's the segment. Now, for the formula, though, we're going to need to add a couple things into our diagram. So this gets a slightly more complicated, but if you take and draw two radii out to the endpoints of that chord, notice that you've created this little red triangle right here. And so we're going to take that triangle, we're going to draw a perpendicular. Now that's going to be the height of our triangle. So you can put a little h there. That's what that is, a little h and a little 90 degree symbol. And then the base of our triangle is this distance right here. So let's call that b for the base of our triangle. So h is the height of our triangle, b is the base. Because really what we're doing is we're going to take the segment, or we're going to take the sector of the circle, and we're going to subtract off this red triangle, and then that will leave us with the segment here. That will leave us with this segment. So we take the entire sector, like the last problem, subtract off the red triangle, and that will leave us with our segment. So our formula is going to represent that idea here. And if we put it in words, basically it's the area of our sector minus the area of that triangle that we were talking about. And so the formula will be our sector area formula. So arc measure out of 360 times pi r squared minus our triangle area formula, which you know is base times height divided by 2. 
And again, when we say the base, we're referring to that chord length right there, because that's the base of that red triangle. And when we say height, we are referring to the distance between that chord and the center of the circle. So that perpendicular distance that we sketched in here. So we actually will have a little bit of work to do with that one. All right, the last of our three slices, and this one I know looks like a pretty funny word, and that is called an annulus. Get your chuckles out right now. I can hear you. Say that word a couple times, so it'll make you laugh. So an annulus is the region between two concentric circles. So if you're looking at an eclipse and the moon is going in front of the sun, the little part of light that you see along the outside, right when it's centered on the sun, would be called the annulus. And you can think of probably a few other shapes or things that have this shape, like if you work with tools at all, you know that uh, a washer looks kind of like this, and you know, two-dimensionally, if you're looking at a donut or something like that, it looks like that as well. So that is called an annulus. All right. So an annulus is the region between two concentric circles. Let's use blue again here. Region between two concentric circles. All right, so what do we mean by that? Well, basically, we're taking a look at the region between this outer circle right here. So think about that outer circle. And we're kind of punching a hole in that bigger circle. And that hole is this right here. So if we take that outer circle area, green, and we subtract out the hole that we're going to punch in, which is that smaller circle, we're left with the area between them. So let's write that in words here. So it's the area of the big circle minus the area of the small circle. So in terms of a formula, that means our area is going to be pi r squared minus pi r squared. But to differentiate between the two circles, I'm going to use capital R for the radius of the large circle. So this distance right here we'll call capital R for the large radius. And then lowercase r will be the radius of the small circle. So we'll call that distance lowercase r. So pi r squared minus pi r squared. All right, two examples. Find the shaded area, show the work with four steps. Keep your answer in terms of pi, but I think we'll also put a decimal answer as we go through these. First one is the area of a sector. Now we have right here is 115 degrees. But notice that's not the shaded area. The shaded area is this area right here. And so let's think about what the arc measure would be along the outside here. If you take 360 minus 115 degrees, that leaves us with 245 degrees for that arc measure. So that's what we're going to actually use in our formula. And this is 4 centimeters for the radius right here as well. So the area of a sector is equal to the arc measure out of 360 times pi r squared. And so let's plug in what we know. The area for the arc measure, or the arc measure is going to be 245 out of 360 times pi times 4 squared. Okay, come on, active board. All right, 4 squared. All right, if we reduce that fraction, we get something like 49.70 seconds. And if you take 4 squared, that's 16. I'm going to put that first and leave pi last. Now, if we're going to leave our answer in terms of pi, remember, we're just multiplying those two numbers right there together. And that's going to be another fraction. And it's not a particularly nice fraction, but it ends up being 98 ninths pi. Okay, now if you just punch that in and you got the decimal, that is going to be equal to 10.8 repeating pi. And if you actually multiply out the whole entire decimal, then that is about 34.2. And all of these let's label with centimeters. So depending on your, how you leave your answer there, I'll include all of them. Though it didn't say to leave your answers in terms of pi, would technically would be one of those first two. All right, our second example, notice, is an annulus. So we're going to use our annulus formula. And the measurements given here 
are this be a five and we've got seven right here, both in centimeters. Okay. Now I want you to be thinking about what the radius of the large circle is going to be as well, because the annulus is going to use that. That's not necessarily in here, right? So if we just rotate this around, notice that this distance right here is that 5. So the entire radius for our large circle is 7 plus 5, or 12. Okay, and that's what we're going to have to use, because it's the radius of the large circle. So the area of an annulus is pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. So our area is pi times, now we figured out that large radius is 12. So pi times 12 squared minus pi times the inside radius is the 7. So pi times 7 squared, the small circle radius is 7. Simplifying this out a little bit, 12 squared is 144, so that's 144 pi, and 7 squared is 49, so 49 pi. Now these are like terms, so we can actually subtract these. 144 minus 49 would leave us with 95 pi, and this is an area, so that would be square centimeters. Now let me go back to the previous problem because I almost made a mistake here. I just noticed as I'm standing over here, holy smokes, those are areas, so we need to make sure that we have square units. Maybe some of you guys caught that. You're probably yelling at your screen and saying, I'm going to tell Mr. Swiggum that he screwed up. But I found my mistake. So there you go. 95 times pi is 298.5 as a decimal. So 298.5 square centimeters.